avoidance, duty to retreat, and stand your ground are all related terms and they are all widely misunderstood. We're going to talk briefly about all of them so you'll be smarter than most people in the room. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay updated on all the Defensive Firearms Instruction YouTube videos. Stay to the end of this video for a recommendation of two nationally recognized subject matter experts on the larger topic of self-defense in general, not just the physical skills part. The fourth element of legal self-defense is avoidance. We're gonna talk about what it is, what it's not, and when it applies. I'm Riley Schrader with Defensive Firearms Instruction. I help new and veteran shooters get and improve their defensive shooting skills by teaching the art, science, and laws of self-defense, whether guns are involved or not. If you missed the other videos in this series, please check for the link in the descriptions below. I'm not an attorney, I'm not practicing law, and this is not legal advice. In general, avoiding a conflict, especially a violent one, is always going to be a good strategy. Your life will continue relatively uncomplicated and your risk of injury will not be increased. Anytime you're involved in a confrontation with someone, there is always more than a zero chance of you getting hurt and someone is always going to be upset with your actions. Avoidance is not so much a legal requirement as it is dependent upon how hostile the local prosecutor is to the self-defense concept in general. Although no state requires that you place yourself or a third party in additional danger by retreating, an unscrupulous prosecutor will be very happy to try and mischaracterize you as seeking out the confrontation because you were unable to avoid it. Where things get almost instantly complicated is defining retreat and or avoidance. A disingenuous prosecutor will go out of his or her way to highlight to a jury all the numerous avenues of escape that were present, never mentioning the fact that you were busy with the immediate threat and unable to identify, much less take advantage of those potential avenues. From the practical perspective, if you can avoid a confrontation entirely without placing yourself at additional risk of injury, that's always a win. The strategic part is this. If you win, depending on the seriousness of the confrontation and whether or not injury is involved, your life just got more complicated. The concept of stand your ground laws are almost universally misunderstood by most people and are shamelessly misrepresented by the press. Stand your ground laws are not a license to get away with murder or an automatic shield against prosecution. In general, stand your ground laws simply state that if you're in a place where you have a right to be, you have no duty to retreat in the face of aggression. For my California viewers, you may be surprised to learn that California is, in fact, a stand your ground state and has been years before the concept even started to be lied about by the news media. But don't take my word for it. Google California Criminal Code 3470 and read the jury instructions about whether or not a defendant is required to retreat. All too often, people get emotionally invested into a confrontation and don't recognize that they're talking themselves into a fight. While not in the legal category, your ability to use good people skills is a solid piece of the self-defense puzzle that you should take some time to study in depth. Mark McYoung and Jenna Meek 
go into some detail about recognizing the different types of violence and violent perpetrators in their book, What You Don't Know Can Kill You. The two pages of recommended reading in this book are all excellent books by themselves and need to be on your self-defense bookshelf. As always, please don't take my word for any of this. Do your own research and verify what I've said from other subject matter experts. If you're in the Southern California area and you'd like to schedule a presentation of the elements of self-defense law to your group, send me an email through my website. The link is in the description. If you like this video and want to learn more about the elements of self-defense law, subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay updated on the rest of the Elements of Self-Defense Law series. I'm Riley Schrader. Thanks for watching and see you next time with Defensive Firearms Instruction.